today I'm going to talk about plying, which is where you take uh, two or more existing spun yarns, normally singles, and twist them together, normally in the opposite direction from which they were spun, to make another yarn which will be obviously thicker, but also uh, stronger and balanced. To be able to ply, you need some way of holding your bobbins so the yarn can easily spool off. And the tool we use to do that is called a lazy cake. I've got several examples here to show you. First one I've got is this one here, which is a Ashford Tension Lazy Cake. They don't make this model anymore, but I think they make a similar one. It's got uh, three bars here that you can uh, pick bobbins on, and uh, a peg at this end with a string that you would put over the uh, break band slot of your bobbin. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Um, so you can see uh, this would attach to a spring at the bottom, which I don't have attached at the moment, but uh, this makes it very hard to turn, whereas if there's no tension on it, it will turn freely. I don't like this style of Lazy Kate as I tend to like my Lazy Kate on the same level as me and my spinner. If you have this on the floor, your singles will be pulling straight upwards from it and it's great. But as I have mine on the same level, if I try and get the singles from the back to uh, run across to here where my spinner would be, it rubs on the middle one. Um, obviously with just two bobbins I could turn it round, but if I'm using three, this design doesn't suit my spinning style. Um, a lot of people do uh, get on great with them though. Right, next we have this which is a Lenderham Lazy Kate. This is a far simpler design, it's just a flat board of wood with uh, three uprights in. A little loop here so you can uh, feed your yarns, your singles through it. And uh, again, a tension peg that goes round to a hook that you would put a spring on. Uh, that one's I prefer that design to the Ashford design and uh, have another similar one here that is homemade. It is just a board of wood with holes drilled in to take three metal rods, a little hole here for a peg and a nail in there so I can attach a spring and again put a tension cord round. I'll explain in a minute why we would want uh, tension. Next we have, let's show you this one. This is the um, Electrical uh, 3D printed um, bobbin. I've only got one so I can't show you how they lock together, but they do, it's like a jigsaw. Uh, that bit there would fit into that bit there on the next one. You've got little holes here to tension and uh, it unscrews. So uh, it comes into two pieces, it's fairly portable. So, uh, that again is the vertical design which uh, I like. Next, if you don't have a lazy cake, you can make your own. This is just a cardboard box and some old straight knitting needles. Simply uh, push the knitting needles through the box. I'll put a bobbin on this one before I do it. And there you go, you have a lazy cake will happily turn on there. You can have it this way up or you can have it that way up, whatever suits you. If you want to add a tension cord you can make another hole in the end of the box and add a string that goes across or you can shove a bit of fabric or something in the bottom that will touch the underside of the bobbin and uh, break it slightly. Finally, and this is my favourite Lazy Kate, it's a uh, this one here which is by Hanson Crafts. Unfortunately they're very expensive but they're incredibly well made. It folds out nice and flat like this. The uh, rods then stored in the bottom and uh, these bits pop up so you can put the rods in. This doesn't have a string tensioner, instead you can uh, angle these rods at whatever angle you like and uh, but it clicks into place at 45 degrees and 90 but you can move them however you want uh, and the extra friction between the uh, shaft and the bobbin is what causes uh, breaking so I'll be using this one because uh, it's what I'm used to put my singles on it right before I start I'm going to talk a little bit about tension uh, the reason we may want a tension lazy Kate is because uh, say we've got our yarn 
here nicely wound on our bobbin. If we have no tension on, we give that a yank, it comes off and then the bobbin immediately carries on spinning, starts to pull it backwards and generally uh, cause problems. Or as if uh, I have just a little bit of tension, oh, that wasn't any tension, a little bit of tension, we pull, it stops fairly quickly. So it just gives you a bit more control over your singles, which is particularly useful if you're spinning something very, very high twist, otherwise it will just pull off and start uh, twisting back on itself. Okay, I'm almost ready to go, I think. I have my uh, Nano set up over here, set up the same as before. The uh, only difference is I've now got this button here switched to S, and uh, I'll show you how you can tell you want it S. Uh, if you can remember you've definitely spun your single Z, then you'll know you want it S. If you can't remember and you want to do a bit of a check, then uh, pull off some of your singles and uh, folded in half. It will twist back on itself and you can see, I think you can probably see if I hold it against this cloth, you can see the angle there uh, is that way which is like the middle bar of a letter S so uh, I know this singles happily will want to be plied S. I'll wind some of that back on and uh, yeah while I've got this here I'll mention this. This is just my lap cloth for spinning. It's a bit of fabric, uh, two bits of fabric that I've sewn together, black on one side, white on the other. That means I get nice contrast, so I have this on my lap when I'm spinning, I can see what I'm doing. It also means if I'm working with anything that started off as raw fleece, all the little bits and bobs that haven't fallen out yet will fall out on the cloth rather than on my lap. So, I have this set up as I did before. I'm even going through the same guides. I know some people when they're plying and they're plying they like to use the opposite guides to when they're spinning singles. I don't bother. My tension is again fairly low. I will likely have to fiddle with that, but I've got it started off nice low level. I have my leader here with a loop in it just like before. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is get my uh, ends of my two bobbins and uh, you can see one's feeding that way, one's feeding there, it doesn't matter. They'll uh, happily feed off. Oh, one thing I'll mention before I actually start. This is not how I would normally ply. I've got my bobbins and my spinner here so you can see them uh, all in shot. This is a very small distance from here to here uh, where I'm holding it and from here to the orifice. In general I like that distance to be as long as possible so I'd want my lazy cake generally off to my left within arm's reach just so I can grab it if there's any disasters but as far as possible because that way if I spun say this bit of yarn with a little bit more twist than that bit of yarn by accident um, once it's stretched out like this the twist will even itself out so I'll get a more even yarn and the same with plying the distance from my fingers to the orifice. I want as long as possible but everything in arm's reach so the ply twist evens itself out and I get a slightly more even yarn. Now these, because they're the ends, they've been let untwist. I don't really want that uh, untwisted, so I will uh, add a bit more twist until it looks like the rest of the yarn. That one looks pretty good. Now, I forgot my sample, I left it in the room I was spinning in, but what I did was, as soon as I finished spinning, I took the last uh, 12 inches or so of my singles, folded it in half, and uh, got a little six inch section like this but longer that showed me how much twist this wanted to have to be a balanced plied yarn. Now generally you will want a balanced yarn or a slightly over plied yarn. There's no reason I'm aware of that you'd ever want to under ply your yarn. If you're spinning something lacy and drapey. You want your yarn balanced, so you'd look at this and you would try and replicate that angle of twist when you're uh, plying. If you're doing something that wants a bit of stretch, like socks or a hat, you'd add a little bit more plying twist, not too much, just a little bit, and that makes your yarn a bit springier. So uh, just uh, my sample that I don't have here. Ordinarily, I would keep next to me and uh, as I'm plying, refer to it from time to time. So I've got my extra twist in here and that one. I'll get my two ends together. And you can either tie them onto this loop. What I tend to do is put them through once, 
wrap round and through again and maybe one more time. So that's fairly securely fastened now, uh, but I won't need to cut it at the end. Okay, I'm not used to spinning in this position, but hopefully I'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so I've got my everything set up lovely. Let's start plying. Okay, my take up is fine, I can feel it's pulling on. No, my take up is not fine, my take up's close, it is taken up but not quite enough, so I'll up my tension a bit and I'll wind on my leader just so uh, any knots and lumps are definitely out of the way. Um, I think you can probably see this looks a fairly good amount of plying twist, so I want to keep that amount of uh, yarn fed in per time period. If I wasn't talking at the same time, I would be counting in my head saying one, two, three, one, two, three, or whatever count I needed to get the right amount of twist. But because I'm talking, I will just have to uh, rely on muscle memory. Some people find that uh, when they're plying, they like to listen to music. That helps them keep the beat. I uh, will sometimes do that, or I'm perfectly happy watching TV or listening to an audiobook. My only concern is that it doesn't have music, as that puts me off. You can see here I've got uh, both the singles coming over the top of my forefinger and they're just held gently with my thumb. Now some people will separate the singles like that between their fingers. Uh, I tend not to do that, instead I... Alright, I'll turn this off. And I will put a bit more to see that, that stopping, let this twist get a bit too much. So I'm just letting some of that twist into the next bit here. My twist is even again and I will wind that on manually. Right, as I was saying, I tend to hold my uh, singles there between my thumb and forefinger and separate them somewhere in my hand. So one will be coming up under my palm and the other one will be coming to between those fingers or those fingers. Uh, it really doesn't matter how you do it. The important thing is for this sort of yarn, you want the tension on both to be even. So when you pull here, you want uh, them to feed out at an even rate. If the tension on one is higher than the other, then uh, the looser one will start to wrap around and you won't get an even yarn. So uh, I will carry on a little bit more. And that really is all there is to it. Just uh, steadily feeding the yarn on a set amount over a set period of time. Now, uh, if you find you're getting uh, pigtails, you can see one's forming there, but uh, it pulls out under just the tension of the weight of the bobbins. Uh, if you get too many and they're not getting pulled out, that's when you'd want to up the tension on your lazy kate. Uh, someone asked me on my spinning video about when you move the hooks on the flyer arms. I will move mine now. I can see that, can you see from there? Yeah, you can kind of see. I've got a little bump of uh, yarn built up there. Now, uh, ideally what I want is a smooth first layer, then I'll up the tension a little bit if I need to, go back and do a smooth second layer, and keep going backwards and forwards until my bobbin's full. I don't want to make too many big lumps like this. If you do it too long, the bottom starts pulling out and the whole thing can collapse. I'm quite bad at uh, moving my hooks regularly enough. Um, and you can see on these they're a little bit lumpy. You will fit more yarn onto your bobbin if you can get into the hang of doing it. And uh, you'll have fewer tension problems, because as your bobbin fills, you'll find you need to uh, add uh, increased tension to get the same amount of take up. And uh, you don't really want to be messing around doing that uh, with lumps if you don't have to. Now, I think you can probably see the my white bobbin has more yarn on it than the teal one. I did that deliberately so I can show you what to do when uh, you get to the end of one of your singles but not the other because that pretty much always happens. Every now and then you'll split your yarn perfectly and you'll spin your singles the exact same thickness and there'll be no problems but 90% of the time you'll have a little bit of one left over and uh, when the other ones run out 
to try and minimise that, do uh, weigh your fibre before you start and split it into two or three or however many plies you're doing. Uh, as I said, I deliberately didn't do that, so I can show you what to do. So uh, I think I'm going to stop this now and carry on uh, applying this lot. And when I get to the end, I will come back and uh, make a, uh, another video. You can see here, I've got a bit of uh, pigtailing outside the orifice. I think that's because, again, I need to move my guide over. I'll uh, wind some of this on manually. And I've got too much twist in here because it wasn't winding on. So, uh, again, I'm going to move my pinch back about that much and uh, let that extra twist even itself out over this yarn. Um, you will notice that uh, when you're spinning singles, sorry, when you're plying, uh, it will start pigtailing back on itself even when it's got the right amount of twist. That's because once single's been left on the bobbin for a little while, the twist in it will go to sleep. It's it's still there, as soon as it gets wet it will reawaken, the, the angle of twist is still the same. It's just like with knitting, when you block it, it goes into an unnatural shape and stays there. So uh, don't be worried if your yarn starts to uh, twist when you're plying it, it's supposed to. Another thing I'll mention, now I'm talking about twist, uh, some people say to let your singles rest on the bobbin um, once you've spun them, give them at least 24 hours to calm down a little bit. You can if you want to, I tend not to bother, I'm generally very enthusiastic to see my finished yarn, I want to apply it as soon as possible, I don't want to be uh, messing about waiting for no reason. It will help your yarn be slightly less pigtaily, but I don't find it makes that much difference and if you just put a little bit of tension on your lazy kate then you don't get pigtailing anyway. Um, once the yarn's under tension it behaves itself far better. So I am going to stop now, I will uh, finish plying this and then come back when I've got a little bit left on one bobbin and none on the other. And I've finished plying uh, all of the stuff on the uh, turquoise bobbin, you can see that one's run out but as anticipated this white bobbin hasn't run out. One thing you might have noticed is that even though I started off with two bobbins of singles, I've already got two bobbins of plied yarn. That's for a couple of reasons. Uh, well, partly because of what I mentioned earlier um, about moving the hooks regularly. If I was better at moving my hooks, or if this was a, sm a thinner yarn, so uh, it uh, filled the bobbin more slowly, I would get more on. But uh, also, the cross-section of the yarns is very different. This is a, uh, a very smooth, fairly tight uh, cylindrical, uh, circular cross-section, whereas this is much looser and, uh, and there's lots of um, indents in the cross-section, I meaning it takes much more space. Uh, so to fit it all on, I'd have to yank my tension up really tight, which the Nano wouldn't like. So don't be surprised if you take up more bobbins with plying than you did with singles. That's perfectly normal. Now, if you look online, you'll find lots of ways to deal with this problem. It won't normally be so extreme. Uh, you should have your bobbins more evenly loaded than this, but I thought I'd uh, do it a bit extreme for an example. Your um, examples of what to do, and if you've only got not much yarn, is um, you can Google Andean plying or look for an article on Nitty called Handy Plying, which are very similar things. You wrap your yarn, uh, your singles, around your hand in a certain way that it forms a bracelet that will sit around your wrist, both ends of the yarn accessible, so you can uh, apply from that. Or you can wind it on a ball winder and apply from a centre pull ball. But another thing you can do with these awesome bobbins where one end removes is this. So I'll take my leader off and I've got my little bobbin there. Um, here I have a regular ball winder. I think I'm going to do this in mid-air because if I attach it to the table the camera's going to wobble like crazy. So what I'm going to do is take some of this singles that's on the bobbin and wind it off on my ball winder. I would like to try and get exactly half. Getting exactly half is unlikely so I'm going to aim for a little bit more than half. Right, so I'm just winding. 
ideally I'd be doing this on the table so I could use my spare hand to tension the yarn, but never mind. This will still work. I've got a bit of a pigtail there, I don't want that in my plying. There we go, I've pulled that out. Okay, that's probably about right. So I will uh, break this yarn. If I want to park this end so it doesn't go anywhere, there's a little notch there on the side of the Nano that I can put it in. Or you can use a quilting clip or all sorts of other things to hold it in place. Right, now I've got my uh, yarn wound onto here. All I need to do now is take it off there and put it on the bobbin. So now I have a centre pull ball stuffed onto another bobbin. I can put that bobbin back on the Lazy Kate and carry on plying as before. So uh, I may as well show you again. I've got another tip I want to show you as well. So I'll, I'm wrapping these around there a couple of times to hold it tight. Got my tension fairly loose. I'm already in the correct direction because I haven't changed it. Move that a bit further away. It's a little bit easier. And I'm going to stop it to wind on that knot. Again, generally I wouldn't be spinning yarn this chunky. I certainly wouldn't be spinning it on the Nano. So uh, the only reason I'm doing this is because I tried recording a video last night with my normal lace weight yarn and you couldn't really see what was going on. So I had spun some fatter yarn just for the purpose of these videos. You can see the uh, yarn that says on a centre pull ball on the bobbin. We're pulling from the outside strand and it's working exactly as if it were wound straight onto the bobbin. Now, while I'm plying off this, I'm going to show you a tip that makes plying a little bit more complicated, but it helps combat uh, tension issues that some people have been having. You can see here, I'm winding on a length. Actually, I'm going to up my tension first. So it make this a bit easier. No, hang on, I'll wind on. Oh, I've done what I did before and managed to totally take the tension off. Right. Up the tension. Pull this yarn out. And wind on by hand. I may, I think I'm going to need to up that again when I start, but uh, we'll see, right, let's see if I can get this to wind on nice and quick. Mm. That still wants a little bit more. There we go. Right, now as I was saying, you can see here I'm pushing some in, then waiting, I'm pushing some more in, then waiting, pushing more in, then waiting. So the tension system is having to uh, deal with a fairly large amount of yarn at once. To get more even winding on, we can feed the yarn in more evenly. And to do that, we'll feed it in with both hands. I'm going to stop it and move my guide hooks and explain to you a bit more about exactly what I'm going to be changing. Okay, guide hook's moved on to a new spot. Right, so at the moment I'm feeding it in with this front hand, pushing some in. What I am going to change to is feed it in with both hands. So I will be feeding in with the front hand, then pushing with the back hand, and alternating opening and closing my hands, and changing the pinch so I've got a constant infeed of yarn into the orifice. So here I'm feeding in with the front, feeding in with the back, feeding in with the front, feeding in with the back, feeding in with the front, feeding in with the back. 
This requires a little bit more coordination, both in getting your hands working together and also in getting your level of twist right. Because as you'll see, as I'm feeding him with the front, getting a lot of twist built up before the orifice and uh, then that twist bounces back and uh, twists up the uh, two strands between my fingers. So I need to watch for the point exactly where my fingers touch exactly there and look at the amount of twist I've got that is how much twist will end up in the yarn on the bobbin so uh, it's not really a beginner technique it's much easier to watch your twist and see it feed it in as it is but it does help you uh, deal with tension issues you're constantly feeding yarn in All right, I'm just going to keep on doing this because uh, it's looking like I'm nearly at the end. While I'm doing this, I suppose I can mention my spinning position. This actually generally isn't how I would be spinning, but it's one of the joys of an e-spinner. You can put it wherever you like and um, work across your body rather than backwards and forwards or however you find comfortable. On most wheels, the orifice will be straight in front of you, perhaps slightly offset to the left or the right, but uh, you do not get the chance really to spin from side to side, yet you may find that more ergonomically easy for your body. I certainly find uh, if I'm chain plying that that is much easier if I'm uh, working across my body. So I tend to set my e-spinner off to one side and uh, the lazy kate off to the other. Oh no, I here estimated too well. See, I've got to the end and uh, I've only got a couple of inches left of the other. What I was going to do is I was going to take, hope this one ran out first, take the centre pull ball off here and ply the last few yards from both the inside and outside of the centre pull ball at the same time. That way uh, we'd use up all our yarn and uh, break that as well and um, not have any annoying little bits of singles left over. So uh, that didn't work out, but never mind, uh, I estimated quite well. So uh, let's take this bobbin off and have a look. And here we go, we've got three bobbins of uh, double knit to Aran-ish weight yarn. My end will be coming untwisted a little bit, that's fine, I'll just uh, leave that alone once I get to winding it on the um, nitty noddy or the skein winder I can just introduce a little bit more twist and once the skein's tied it's not going anywhere so uh, that will be your next job wind off this stuff into skeins there's plenty of videos that show you how to do that so uh, I don't think I'm going to bother explaining unless I get a lot of people asking me Thank you for watching, I hope I've covered anything and if you've got any questions then let me know on YouTube or Rev or Facebook wherever you saw this.